Hello everyone. Today I'd like to discuss how to use a VNC client to remotely access a CMT HMI and a non-CMT HMI on your local network. Within this demonstration, I'm going to be using a CMT3072 and an EMT3070A. But VNC functionality is supported by almost every HMI. The only exceptions are certain screenless HMIs, such as our CMT SVRs, and also certain members of our IP series, which can still function as a VNC server, but the method used to enable this function must be added to the HMI's project using system tags. In order to remotely access our HMI, we'll need to download VNC client software such as real VNC or ultra VNC. Feel free to pause the video while you find the appropriate software. Now that we've installed the appropriate software, we'll need to open the HMI's settings menu. For our CMT series, the settings menu can be accessed by clicking this small orange circle at the top left corner of our display. And to access our HMI's VNC settings, we'll need to log into this menu, which we can do by selecting the lock button, and I'll enter the HMI's default password, which is six ones, Now on the left-hand side, we'll scroll down until we find the tab labeled VNC Settings. We'll select this tab, and once open, I'll ensure that Start VNC is enabled. And then I'll select VNC Login Password. and enable password free for this example. With that finished, I'll click OK. And we'll scroll up to the information tab. Where we'll notice our HMI's IP is set to 192.168.0.2. Let's make a note of this and select the lock button once more. And next we'll take a look at our non-CMT's settings. To access the settings menu of our non-CMT's, I'm going to select the gray arrow in the bottom right corner. This will display a small menu with four icons, in which we'll select the gear icon to open our settings menu. Prior to accessing this menu, we'll need to provide the system password, which in our case is the same default password that we used before. Our menu will open and initially display the network tab, but as you've probably guessed, we'll need to find the VNC settings tab once more in this example. So I'll select Next on the bottom left until I reach the VNC Server Settings menu. In this menu, I'm going to ensure that Start VNC Single Connection is enabled. And unless you've configured a VNC password or specified password free within the Remote tab of the system parameters within your project, we'll need to define a login password. I'll make this easy for us and give us a very simple password, which will be the number one. Now let's click apply and navigate back to our network tab, where again, we'll note our IP address, which is 
3.3. And so we'll select OK and configure our PC to communicate with our device. On our PC, I'll need to change my IP so that we can communicate with our device. To do this, I'm going to select the Start menu and open my control panel. And we'll select Network and Internet, and then click on the Network and Sharing Center. Since I'm connected to my HMI via an Ethernet connection, I'll double click on the Ethernet interface, click Properties, and select our Internet Protocol version 4 settings. Both of our devices had an IP address that was 192.168.0. some number. And both had a subnet mask, just like the one you see here, which is 255.255.255.0. So we'll need to make sure that our IP address lies on the 192.168.0 subnet and also that it has a unique identifier, which in our case is 4. With our configuration finished, we'll click OK and close this menu. And now that I've configured my Ethernet connection for my PC, we'll go ahead and open our VNC software. Let's enter the IP address for our CMT within our VNC client. And I'll hit enter, and our HMI is now displayed on our PC. And we can navigate through our HMI project and even access the settings menu. Next, let's connect to and control our EMT3070A by entering the HMI's IP address once more into our VNC client. This time, we've been prompted to enter a password. And I'll enter the password configured within our HMI's settings menu. And just as before, our HMI's screen is now visible, and we can now remotely monitor and control either HMI while on the local network. If you found this tutorial helpful and would like to see more, head on over to our YouTube channel and select the Playlist tab. Feel free to check out our website as well for free demo projects, user manuals, and more. Thank you for watching.